Good morning. Welcome. As we begin worship this morning, we ask that you calm your hearts and your minds as our bells present our prelude this morning. Thank you. That was beautiful. 
They're looking at me. Are y'all going to do another number or, or it's my turn? <laughs> I'm not going to sing. So. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is a joy to see so many of you. We are on a com- combined service opportunity. We have uh, both our traditional and contemporary services combined today and such a nice day. Today is also Confirmation Sunday and our confirmation class is going to be officially pledging their faith uh, to Jesus as their Savior and Lord and promising to be uh, a full part of the membership of of this congregation. We're going to do that toward the end of the service, and we have a a great service uh, planned for you. We're looking forward to this wonderful opportunity that we have to worship God. And we're going to get the most out of today if we fully engage in the worship process, if we're fully present, if we are earnestly trying to connect with the Lord. And I just want to challenge you to do that, to take a moment to center yourself and to say, God, I am here for you. I'm here to offer you praise. I'm here to offer you thanks. I am here to listen to what you would have me, uh, to what you would ha- like to say to me today. And so let's, let's enter uh, with that mentality, always remembering our mission as God's church to follow Jesus and to share him with others. And we want to be on a, on a spiritual growth process, a spiritual growth cycle or pathway of gathering for worship, to worship God earnestly, growing and studying in, in groups, building one another up and, and, and encouraging one another. And then uh, so we gather, we grow, we give of our talents and our time and our treasure for the sake of God's purposes and the ministry of the church. And then we go. We go and we share the light and the love of Christ with one another. And if we're doing that, gathering, growing, giving, and going on a regular basis, then the Spirit is going to have room to work in our lives. We're going to have opportunity to, to speak God's truth and, and, and goodness into us that we would have something to share with others. So let's fully engage in this opportunity to worship God this morning. Um, We do need to extend condolences to several church members who have lost loved ones. Dabney uh, Joyner in the death of her brother, Phil Mulholland. Uh, Amy Williamson and her family in the death of her father, Furman York. And also, as of yesterday, Mary Tompkins in the passing of her husband, Mike. So um, please keep those families in your thoughts and prayers this week. Uh, We need to let you know we're going to have a church council meeting on Monday, May the 8th at 6 p.m., we have some important things to go over on, on that date, uh, Monday, May the 8th at 6 p.m., so please make arrangements to be there if you're a part of that. Don't forget our New Testament Bible Challenge, not going to read through the details there, uh, but don't forget Pastor Michelle is offering a, a weekly study on Wednesdays dealing with the readings that we're doing. And on Wednesday evening, this is something that we've been building up for for a long time. Wednesday is going to be May the 3rd. We're going to have an opportunity for worship called Spring Renewal. We're going to have it in our fellowship hall. We are um, building that as a bring a friend opportunity. We would love for you to bring a friend. It won't be worship exactly like you would see on on Sunday morning, a a little uh, uh, more free, but there's going to be several speakers. There's going to be uh, uh, several different themes that that get addressed that evening, and it's a great opportunity for someone to meet our church, uh, not on Sunday morning. So we would love for you to mark your calendars and come out for that special night of worship and renewal Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. in in the Wesley Building. Uh, we, We can't wait to see how the Lord works and moves through that. Also, the ladies of our church are, are putting on a, a dinner and fashion show. That's going to be on May the 9th. Uh, please, it's a ticketed event. They, they have tickets available after worship today. Uh, so please see someone if you're interested in going. They've put a lot of thought and work and effort into that event and want you to be a part of it if, if you would like. Um, men's group is going to meet on, on Friday at 11.30 a.m. at Magnolia's restaurant. Um, there's, a, there's an opportunity to help a, a, a Ukrainian family that ha, is here um, as, as, as refugees. There's an announcement about that at the bottom of the bulletin. Please read through that, and if you feel led to um, give um, and, and help in any way, we encourage you to do so. 
Also, our youth are going to have the opportunity to go back to Saukahatchee Summer Service this year. That's a week-long work camp, home repair ministry that teenagers 14 and up are invited to participate in. It's, in this, it's, it's a ministry of the South Carolina Methodist Conference, and there's different camps that happen all over our state. We're going to two different camps this year because of some scheduling needs. And so if you're a teenager or, or if you're an adult and would like to, to go, uh, please see one of us and, and get registered. The deadline is coming up soon, and so we need you to, to act fast, but we would love for you to be able to go, and if cost might be a factor, please see me or Chad or Grant. Um, we, we want everyone to be able to go, uh, and we don't want cost to be prohibitive there, so let us know if, if you would like to, to speak about that. There's other announcements printed in the bulletin. Please take a few moments to read through those. I know there's something in there for each of you, uh, a way to grow, a way to connect, uh, a way to serve. Uh, with, with those shared, let us take a few brief moments uh, and stand up and pass the peace and love of Christ with those that are near us. And to you all who are joining us online, we wish you the Lord's peace and love as well. Y'all twisted. Come here. <laughs> I know Thank you twisted, you. but you twisted. <laughs> there you go. Well, at least we can fix that part. <laughs> and turn to him 61 him 61 come thou almighty king <laughs>
At this time, let us affirm our faith with the timeless and priceless words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Scripture today is from 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not a perishable, but a imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. This is a word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for the rain that falls from the heavens. These showers that foster and grow beautiful flowers, fruits, vegetables, those that sustain us and nurture us. Lord, like these showers, we thank you for our community of faith. As we gather here today in a community that grows stronger in you with our presence, our prayers, and through your word. Lord, like the rain that cleanses and washes away the old to make anew, we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus Christ that has washed over us and has redeemed us, the lost, the fallen, and the broken. Father God, strengthen us as we boldly call out to you as a community, as a nation, and as a world to set aside our differences, our divisions, and to turn to you in our times of peril. Lord, give us the faith of Daniel and the strength of David to stand for you in a time where it is easier to be silent than it is to be bold. Lord, grant us the courage to stand when those around us sit. And Lord, allow us to be the voice of the Almighty King. Lord, allow us to seek you with all of our hearts and allow nothing to block our path to you and to our salvation. Lord, we thank you for this important day in the life of our church. Lord, we thank you for this day, Confirmation Sunday. We thank you for those confirmands, the future of this church, We thank you for their moldable minds and open hearts as they have learned about you, your son, and the church. Father, we thank you for their mentors that have been beside them throughout their expedition this year. But they will be with them as they continue to travel through their walk with you and strengthen the bond that has been made over this journey. Lord, guide them as they become members of this church and the leaders within it. Lord, allow them to lead with their servant hearts, with their foundation on your word. And Lord, at this time, we ask that the members of this congregation lift up those by name that are in need of prayer. Father God, we lift those up mentioned by name and the situations that they are facing, good or bad. God, we lift up those that are sick and are in need of healing. We lift up those that are weak, those that are weary, and those that are facing everyday life, trials, anxieties, and worries. Lord, we ask that you trade our mourning and grief And for joy and gladness, gladness of your spirit. Trade our despair for hope and praise. Lord, we choose to give you thanks today and believe that your will will overcome all things that we face. Lord, we thank you that you are with us in whatever we face. And that you are greater than any trial that we'll ever come against. We know and recognize that you are sovereign. You are the one. And Lord, we thank you for the victory that is ours because of Christ Jesus. And Lord, we are confident that you have good in store today, tomorrow, and all of our futures. We thank you for what works that you have put in us. And thank you for your son. And in that name that has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, how be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we now ask that all the children come forth and spend a moment with Miss Kate for the children's moment. Thank you. 
information in it. And it's sometimes hard for us to understand. So how do we know exactly where the treasure is? That's easy, because X marks the spot. If I turn my cross just sideways, what does it look like? Yeah. That helps us find the spot, right? Of where that treasure is. Jesus died on the cross so that you and I could enter. Yes. Jesus died on the cross so that you and I could enter the kingdom of heaven. When you look at the cross, when you look at the cross and you put your trust in Jesus, the treasure will be yours. Amen. That is so exciting. To enter the kingdom of heaven is the greatest treasure one would ever desire. It is more precious than silver or gold or jewels. That is why Jesus calls us to give up all that we have and follow him. Let's pray together. Everybody hold your hands. Dear God, thank you for giving us a treasure map to lead us to your intentions and the pure joy of heaven. In your name we pray. Amen. So guys, as you go this week, remember, your Bible is your treasure map. Thank you, Miss Kay, for that children's moment. As the children are returning back to the pews or going to Little Church, we now ask the ushers to come forward as we prepare to give back to God with our grace, with our tithes and offerings. Oh 
Lord, take these treasures that we have received in your name and magnify them for your glory and for your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's take our hymn books and turn to hymn 514. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. We'll sing verses 1 and 4. Verses 1 and 4. standing for our scripture lesson from, I'm switching it up on you again this morning from John, the 15th chapter, beginning with verse one. And I have some important props that, uh, Chad, you might want to watch out. Um, (laughs) You might make sure I don't get you. (laughs) Okay. Jesus said, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. But every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Jesus is saying, you are cleansed. You are saved. I have redeemed you. You are saved by faith. You don't earn God's salvation by doing good works. But I want you to be fully alive in me. Okay, that's what Jesus is saying here. And Jesus said in John 10, 10, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it abundantly. And being fully alive in Jesus means that we stay connected to him, the vine. And so he says in verse four, abide in me and I will abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. Friends, this is a tough statement from Jesus. We definitely want to stay connected to him so that we don't end up in the brush pile. Amen? Amen. Amen. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Amen? Amen. Friends, this is the word of God for you and me, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Thanks for humoring me with my little um, liturgical dance. Uh, You can tell I took a a lot of lessons there, you know. (laughs) 
What's the bottom line of what I'm trying to say today? Stay connected to Jesus. I, I, I cut this branch this morning. I was outside with a ladder in my pajamas just for y'all today, okay? And, and this branch is from a hickory tree that, that, that stays over our driveway. And I can tell you it is fruitful. The dents in our cars uh, are testimony to the fruitfulness of, of these branches. There's, if you look closely, there's several little hickory nuts already uh, coming. And this is one that was taken down about two weeks ago from our neighbor's property that he's developing. And it has been disconnected to the vine. How do, when you stand before God, which of my hands do you want to be in? I think we all want to be here. But it takes a daily effort, a daily focus, a daily responsibility and commitment to remain connected to Jesus. Because this can happen before we realize it. And it doesn't look like this immediately, does it? It takes a little while for the symptoms and the results to show. And that's the problem with our, our spiritual health. We don't see the results immediately until all of a sudden we feel empty. We feel a little lost. We don't know exactly what to do. We might feel alone. We might feel like we let God down. But we don't necessarily feel it immediately. It happens over time. But if we stay connected to Jesus, we won't always feel like this either. Some days we'll feel very plain. But if we stay connected to Jesus over time, and it takes a while for this fruit to develop. It takes a while for it to sprout these leaves and to, to become the, the healthy tree that dents our cars and provides shade for our house. So don't gauge things on a, on a day-to-day or even a week-to-week. Spiritual vitality, spiritual health, and connectedness to Jesus is over the long haul. You know, each of us cares for our bodies on a daily basis. We all sleep, eat, and drink. You know, some of us do a better job at those things than others. But we do those things to stay alive. And, and if we don't, we will feel that in our bodies, you know, pretty much immediately. And the older I get, the more sleep I need and the more I feel it when I don't sleep, right? But the, 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 the feeling is, is not as immediate with our spiritual health. And that's why we need to be intentional about staying connected to Jesus. I need another hand. <laughs> Uh, a lot of us, though, uh, myself included, at times, we live with the false assumption that if we, if we stop actively pursuing Jesus on a daily basis, that we'll kind of remain where we are. And I really need a third branch that's in between these two. But, but really what happens is, is we start becoming like this the moment we disconnect ourselves from Jesus. Instead of staying where we thought we were in terms of our spiritual health, we've already started losing ground, and we didn't realize it. You know, I, I, this is not in the scriptures, but I like to equate the, the spiritual life with Jesus, our spiritual vitality with Jesus. It's like the current of life is a, is a slow-moving current in the opposite direction of God. And you and I are in a canoe by ourselves, you know, sometimes with others, but a lot of times by ourselves because we, we all have personal responsibility in our daily relationship with God. We're, we're paddling upstream, and the, the, the stream, sometimes the current is stronger than others. Sometimes the rapid's a little bigger than others, but every one of them is navigable. We are completely capable of navigating through life, connected with Jesus, abiding with Jesus. But sometimes we get tired, sometimes we get bored, sometimes we get frustrated or angry or we get our feelings hurt or, or we get distracted. Sometimes we just rebel against God and, 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 and choose to sin. Sometimes we accidentally fall into sin. But when we do those things, we stop our active rowing. And instead of remaining where we are, what happens? 
we drift downstream. And so the Christian life, abiding in Jesus, staying connected with Jesus, requires a constant paddling, a constant nourishing our faith, a constant reading God's word, a constant thinking about God and and doing our best to stay connected with Jesus. Think about this. A human being does not by accident fall into a healthy, thriving relationship with God. When was the last time that you just accidentally found yourself reading God's word without even realizing it? Or here's another one. When's the last time you caught yourself with your checkbook in your hand just writing a big old check to God without even realizing it? Do do we naturally gravitate in to godliness and faithfulness? Do we? No. Sometimes it's more natural when we're with people who are doing those things intentionally. But as human beings, our default isn't toward a life of godliness. Our default is is to a life of worldliness, a a self-centeredness. And so it takes a, a constant effort to be paddling up that stream towards God in the direction of Jesus Christ. You know, the, uh, the good news is that, that Jesus, I'm going to have to get a vacuum cleaner out, um, Jesus always welcomes us back. And the fact of the matter in the, the plant kingdom, this branch is as good as dead. But in the kingdom of God, Jesus does what? He can bring dead things to life. Jesus Christ can bring dead things to life. I've heard a, a quote about Jesus that uh, he does, uh, God does some of his best work in cemeteries. And we may realize that we've allowed our spiritual relationship with Jesus to become like this. But the invitation is always open, and he invites us to turn to him. And as soon as we turn to him, life starts being pu- pumped back through what has, what has wilted and what is dying. And he brings us back to life. He brings us back to vitality. Some of you have been there before. You've been like this or worse. Amen? And Jesus has brought about a resurrection in your life. You may not have, it may not have happened in your life, but you might know somebody that it's happened to. With Jesus, there is always opportunity to repent and turn back to him and get back connected with him. And the prophet Jeremiah, as Kate read earlier, promises us, you know, this is the Lord speaking through Jeremiah. When you search for me, even though you might look like this, when you search for me, you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will let you find me, declares the Lord. So, so how do we abide in Jesus? How, how do we stay connected to Jesus? There's all sorts of ways that uh, can help us grow and, 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 and stay connected with a vital faith. In Jesus, we, we can read about him by reading God's word on a regular basis. We're trying to read through the New Testament as a congregation right now. Uh, we, we stay connected to Jesus by worshiping him, by, by passionately and intentionally and earnestly worshiping him on a daily basis, not by dressing up and attending a service, but by passionately and earnestly worshiping Jesus. We, we, we stay connected to Jesus by hanging around with others who love him and are trying to stay close to him. We stay connected to Jesus simply by thinking about him on a regular basis throughout our day. We can think about Jesus. What would he have us do? You know, what, what, what is he like? Who was he in character? And how can I be more like him? We, we, we stay connected to Jesus by, by doing the things that he did. He came as a, as a personal, tangible example of the way that, that we're supposed to live. Did you get your mic? Okay. And, and, and so we can, we can um, stay close to Jesus by, by doing the right thing and by being compassionate and, and, and forgiving and merciful. You know, we can think of all of these uh, opportunities as paddle strokes that Jesus wants us to make use of regularly to stay closely connected with him. Oswald Chambers, the, uh, the great devotional writer who wrote the book entitled My Utmost for His Highest, he writes, God will not force me to, to abide in Jesus. 
Sometimes we wish God would force us, but he doesn't. He gives us free will. God will not force me to follow or abide in Jesus. I must choose to abide in Jesus. That's a choice of mine. I can choose to abide in Jesus in intellectual matters and money matters and all matters of life. Jesus was at home with God wherever he went. And it does not matter what my circumstances are. I can be as sure of abiding in Jesus in them as in a prayer meeting. At first, it can be a major struggle to abide in Jesus. But we must strive to do so until it becomes our law of life. Just like a a, a canoe trying to paddle upstream, it's going to take some work to abide in Jesus. And sometimes it's going to feel like it's not the most interesting or the most exciting thing to do. It will take a, a personal sacrifice of time and money at times. And sometimes you may be the only person around you who is truly abiding in Jesus. But Jesus promises that if we put in the daily effort and strive to stay connected with him, when it's all said and done, we will be glad we did because two incredible things will happen. Number one, we will bear fruit for God's glory. If we abide in Jesus, God will bear, God will produce fruit through us. We will make a positive impact on the world. God will use us to do things that we wouldn't have done otherwise. Some people will come to faith in Jesus because we stayed connected to him. Some people's lives will be changed for the better because you stayed connected to Jesus. Those who abide in me will bear much fruit, Jesus says. Think about it. God is the source of all love and life. And with the power of God flowing through us like sap through a vine, good fruits will burst forth from our lives. God will do great things through those of us who abide in Jesus. There's no limit. Think about it. This is the power of God. There is no limit to what God can do when we as individuals and as a church abide in Jesus Christ. Jesus said of himself, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So Jesus wants us to stay connected with him, uh, you know, so that, so that he can bear fruit in our lives. But the other incredible thing that happens is that Jesus' joy comes to live within us. When we, this doesn't look very joyful, does it? The only joy that can bring is my boys when they want to have their friends over in a little fire <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the backyard. Um, you can't really light this one on fire very easily. You had to put this one in after the fire's already hot. Because it's still alive, because it's it's been freshly connected with God. But when we hang in there with Jesus, when we abide in Jesus, even though it's not always fun, even though it's hard, even though it requires some personal sacrifice and daily effort, his joy will enter our lives. Not just any joy, his joy. And he says, complete joy that no one can take from you, no circumstance. Or no person in this world can take from you, no matter what they do to you. When you have the joy of Christ in you, you have a peace that surpasses all understanding. You have an assurance that you would never get from anywhere else. Because you have the the life and the love and the joy of Christ in you. And so what the confirmation class, I'm putting you guys on the spot now... They are promising today. They're gonna, we're going to call them name by name, and they're going to bravely come up and, and stand before you. And they're going to promise to abide in Jesus. They're going to promise that they receive him as their Savior, that, that they believe that he has given his life on the cross for the forgiveness of their sins. And they're promising to, to, to serve him as their Lord, noting that he is in charge and wanting his will to be done in their lives. They're going to promise to 
to turn from their sins, when they realize they've made a mistake or done something that doesn't please God, they're going to promise to, to turn away from it and turn back towards God. And then they're going to promise to be a, a part of the life of this church and support it with their prayers, their presence, their gifts, their service, and their witness. And any of you who have made a commitment to this church, if you've joined this church officially, then you've promised the same thing. So as the confirmation class comes and uh, promises to do their best to abide in Jesus, I want you and me to take this as an opportunity to reaffirm our faith and to reaffirm our commitment to abiding in Jesus, both on our own and and, and at home and, and, and through the life of this church. You know, it takes all of us. We're all gifted in different ways. We all bring in different personal experiences. Uh, we all have uh, different um, uh, um, uh, amounts of, of, of knowledge that can be helpful to, to moving the mission and the ministry of the church forward. And it takes all of us. At, at one point in the, in the confirmation uh, liturgy, you're going to read a commitment to them that says you're going to pray for them and that you're going to you know, encourage them and, and be there for them to build them up as young people within the life of our church family. We all have a duty in, 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 in being church members. Confirmation is usually offered to students 6th grade or above. I think most of these students are 7th graders because they're, they're at that point in life where they're starting to understand uh, a little more, where they're taking a little more personal responsibility. And today, they're going to pledge that they're going to take a personal responsibility for their faith in Jesus Christ and as active members of this congregation. And um, Chad and, and the other leaders have, have gotten you guys some really nice Bibles, something to be proud of, your, your names in them. They have study helps to help you learn the Word of God a little better. They, um, they have some introductions to the chapters and, and dictionaries and concordances that, that you can use to, to learn and, and to study God's Word. We are all in this canoe. And we all have the responsibility of doing what we can to paddle upstream towards God. And the question is, are, are we going to keep that personal responsibility and daily effort? Or are we going to get distracted and, and try it our own way? But when it's all said and done, when we are standing before God, the fact that we stayed connected with Jesus is going to be the most important thing to us. And so let's abide in Jesus every day. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, friends, if you would take a hymnal and turn to page 33. And that's the place in the hymnal where the confirmation liturgy is. I've got to turn to the right page. Friends, through confirmation, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. I present the following names for confirmation. James Douglas Anderson. Wilson Thomas Atkinson, Meredith Blair Bowers, Grayson Elizabeth Galloway, Samuel Yates Hamrick, Nathan Walker Kittle, Lillian Carson Langway, Sullivan James Merchant, Drake Allen Youngerman. 
Are you ready to make your profession of faith in Jesus Christ? On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Amen. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? This is very important. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Amen. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment of Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life? And include these persons now before you in your care. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround you with a community of love and forgiveness that you may grow in your trust of God and be found faithful in your service to others. We will pray for you that you may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confirmation class, would you please kneel at God's altar? And we invite the the parents and sponsors to come forward um, and lay hands on their their students. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Amen. James Douglas, the Holy Spirit worked within within you, you, that having having been been born born through water and the the Spirit, Spirit, you may live as a faithful faithful disciple disciple of Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. God bless you. Wilson Thomas. The Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Meredith Blair. The Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Grace and Elizabeth, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Samuel Yates, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Nathan Walker, 
the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Lillian Carson. The Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Sullivan James. The Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Drake Allen. The Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Okay, confirmands, uh, please stand. We're going to have you walk through your, your family and, and face the congregation. We got to go around. And you've, now you, you, you've made your commitment to the Lord, and we're going to invite you now to your commitment to this congregation of United Methodist Church. So as members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to this congregation of United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? Amen. Um, and as, as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in, the, in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and witness. Amen. And congregation, we have a response for you. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We're at the bottom of 38. <laughs> we give thanks for all that God has already given you. And we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray and, and, and join a hand of, of somebody that's, that's close to you. Father God, we give you thanks for this group of young men and young women who have been studying your word and what it means to follow your son, your son Jesus for weeks. We thank you for Chad and for the other leaders of the class and, and the mentors who have met with them. And we thank you, Lord, for the work that you've done in their hearts through this time. And Lord, we give you thanks in advance for the good things that you're going to do through their lives. And I pray that you will give us all the the strength and the courage and the persistence to stay connected in Jesus, to abide in him, that you will bear fruit in us, and that your joy may be in us, and that that joy may be complete. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you all. You may go to your seats now. Yes, let's, let's give God an offering. If y'all will, please turn in your hymnal to our closing hymn, hymn number 405, Seek Ye First. That's 405. Please rise and let's sing together.
May all of you go in peace. And may all of you stay connected to Jesus. Take personal responsibility for your faith in him. And may God bear fruit in you. And may the joy and the light and the love of Christ be in you. And may it draw others to him. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.